Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Stephanie Meyer, and I'm the Senior Vice President, Chief Nursing Officer, and Incident Commander at Children's Mercy Hospital. The events that happened yesterday at Union Station that we all witnessed and are now trying to process hit really close to home for every single one of us. The impact is not only on the entire community, but especially on our children. As I shared last night, we treated 12 patients, 11 of which were children ranging in ages from 6 to 15. Nine of those children were treated for gun with gunshot wounds. And I'd like to give you some good news today and update you that out of all of the children we have treated, we only have three left in the hospital, all of which who will recover from the injuries they had yesterday. I think it's important that we talk about the tragedies and the lasting impact they're going to have on the mental health of not only the community, but all of our kids. For those that were injured, those that witnessed it, whether they were present at the rally and parade or whether they watched it on TV, and especially for all of our first responders and all of our healthcare workers who were down there responding, whether in the event itself or afterward to the tragedy as they came. We had teams located at Adele Hall and they executed flawlessly. I wanna thank each and every one of them from the bottom of my heart for doing what they do best and bringing our A game. It's their commitment to the community, to the kids, and to every single one of us that makes us an amazing place to be, Children's Mercy and Kansas City. I wanna make sure that the teams that were on site understand that the way those kids came to us, triaged beautifully, packaged, allowed us to treat every single one of them in a manner that nobody else can do. The tragedy in this community was met with strength, compassion, and absolute preparedness, and I could never have been more proud. Thank you guys for being here, and I'd like to introduce Dr. Stephanie Burris, who is our Chief Wellbeing Officer for our Center for Wellbeing. Hi, y'all. Thanks, everybody, for having me today. Uh, in the aftermath of yesterday, we know that our community is struggling. Our kids are struggling, as is our healthcare workforce. No celebration should be ended in a violent act. As you may know, our healthcare workforce has been tr struggling for quite some time. COVID just brought all that to light. And so events like yesterday really bring home that we need to support our healthcare workforce. And that is part of my role and my team's role in the Center for Wellbeing is making sure all of those first responders and all those amazing healthcare workers that responded yesterday with grace and dignity and to their best of their ability and their training. We are all grieving as you are. Many of our staff have young children and they were concerned about where they were at and couldn't locate them. Yet they showed up and they, take, they took care of the kids in the best way they knew how. Now our role is to support them. We are all grieving and will grieve in different ways. Some are heartbroken today, some will be heartbroken next week, some will be in a month. And we have resources here to help them and that's what makes so Children's Mercy so magical is that we have those resources. We have our team on site offering in-person and virtual one-to-one -one support sessions. We have our wonderful facility dogs that we are blessed to have that are here providing staff support and comfort as well as many other resources available. Now I want to introduce Dr. Shayla Sullivan, who is a child and adolescent psychologist or psychiatrist here at Children's Mercy in our developmental and behavioral health. Thank you all for being here. Um, I'm here really to help provide some guidance on how to talk to your children through this senseless tragedy. And I want to just acknowledge that I don't have any magic. I don't have any magical words. I struggled with this conversation with my own children last night. All of us are tired of having this conversation. So I want to encourage you to do what you can. And one of those most important pieces is to be present. We are all very busy and we are all really struck by this awful tragedy like so many other communities across the nation have experienced. We need to turn off our media at times, we need to set our phones down, and we need to be there for our kids. We need to listen first. Your natural tendency may be to talk, 
because that's what mine is, but really listening to our kids and what their fears are, what their questions are, and making sure we understand what they know before jumping in and sharing more information with them. This is hard, so please do take care of yourselves in this process, and please don't hesitate to reach out for help. Um, on our website, we have some guidance for parents, so I encourage you to look at that. But what one big message I would have is to seek help if you think you might need it, as opposed to waiting, because we never want to wait. All of the resources that we've talked about are available on our website for those of you who are watching and is, are available for our team as well. I wanted to thank our entire community and all of you for the outpouring of love and support that we've received. Um, it makes it one of the amazing reasons that we work here and I could not be more thankful. So we're happy to take some questions if you have any. How extraordinary is it to have so many young patients, young gunshot victims coming all at once? I, I pause, extraordinary, I'm not sure I would use the word, but I think the question is well placed. It's um, something we prepare for, honestly, all the time, uh, whether that's through simulation, whether that's through training, and when we knew they were coming, we mobilize in a way that you think you're only going to have to practice for. And so when they came, we were ready with multiple teams standing, waiting to do what we needed to do and to focus on their physical health first. Um, and then, of course, that's just a first step. The next step is now the mental health pieces that will come after. So what I can tell you is just the nine gunshot wounds. The other ones were what we would call incidental injury. Um, and I would tell you that they were from ages six up. Uh, and the six-year-old, I cannot comment on which injury they had. You mentioned uh, the struggling workforce in the past. Can you speak to if that played a role at all in what happened? I know, obviously, you said that uh, the teams were ready and they mobilized and they were active. But could it have been improved if you know there were more medical Sure, I'll have Steph comment on that and then I can add to that. Thank you. I don't think that our first responders and those that took care of any of the patients in the hospital could have done any better. As Stephanie said, we are, were armed and ready to go and they did what needed to be done. When I say struggling, they're struggling just like you and are and unbelievably um, heartbroken that this happened in our backyard. And we all train for this, we're all prepared to take care of these children, but it doesn't negate the fact that it's still not normal for people to see many, many people wounded by gunshots. And so they are really struggling emotionally, not struggling showing up for the kids. They did their job to the fullest. Now we're here to support their uh, mental and emotional well-being going forward. I can just tell you that the three that are remaining, we expect a full recovery. Um, I can't give any more detail than that out of respect for their families, um, but they are stabilized. They're doing well, and um, I think prayers and hope for them is exactly what they need. And Stephanie, one more. Back to the mental health element of all this. The incident is over, but the lingering effects will be mm -hmm. there for a while. We're hearing that a lot of kids called in out of school today. Uh, do you expect to see that? What are the lingering effects that you're worried about? So uh, we're extremely worried. Um, this is coming on the heels of a pandemic where rates of anxiety and depression doubled for young people. We have a mental health campaign that we've already been working on to expand our breadth so we can reach more kids. And now we have more kids that have experienced trauma. So yes, we're anticipating a huge increase in need in our community and we're actively working on how to respond to it effectively. But it's, it's a big task. Last question for the families here. About what they've been telling you, what they've been feeling, seeing their kids in, in this situation that, frankly, no parents should ever have to see their children. Right. Um, the comments that we've received so far of thanks from them at this point, I want to go back to a comment I made last night and how they feel and how we responded. They're, they're fearful. 
they're scared and what they need from us in the community is support and reassurance that the first step that we can give them is back to physical health and the next step that we'll offer is back to mental health and how do we work to make that child and their family whole again. Um, so the Chiefs players have been extremely supportive as the, well as the Chiefs organization. They have reached out to us and we're managing that accordingly. Um, we want to make sure that we're focusing on our patients and our kids and families first, then our staff, and then we will have them help with that.